Hello everyone and welcome to round 2 of the 2013 candidates tournament uh, as you've seen in round 1 it was a pretty peaceful round all of the games were drawn but uh, like I mentioned uh, round 2 already has a couple of surprises and uh, I believe in my previous video while I was introducing the players I forgot to introduce Timur Rajabov uh, probably uh, because I, I was planning to show you Rajabov and only then Peter Sviller but then uh, while I was mixing up the photos I first showed Peter Sviller and I forgot to show you Timur Rajabov uh, but yeah he he is the eighth player of this candidates tournament and this game he has the white pieces against Vasily Ivanchuk and uh, before we uh, check out the game here we can enjoy this nice photo, photo of Vasily Ivanchuk posing uh, for the photo and in the back Timur Rajabov is uh, preparing to, to to join Vasily for, for a game of chess so that being said, uh, let's see this game and um, chances are you've never seen this game and those of you who have might have forgotten about it uh, if, you've, if you've been following the 2013 candidates tournament uh, as it was played. Uh, but uh, then again, you might have seen this game and the chances are you haven't uh, seen the brilliancy that was missed in this game. Uh, but uh, it will be a nice puzzle for you to solve. So let's see the game. Uh, Rajabov has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have d6, knight to f3, uh, and g6. Uh, we have c4, and now f5. Uh, Ivanchuk is setting up his uh, Leningrad variation of the Dutch. Uh, knight to c3, knight to f6, we have g3, uh, bishop to g7, and bishop to g2. And we've entered the Leningrad variation uh, of, of the Dutch defense. Uh, this is the main line. Uh, uh, Ivanchuk castles, Rajabov castles, c6, uh, rook to b1, and knight to e4. Queen to c2 by Rajabov, and uh, here Ivanchuk plays knight captures on c3. And uh, here uh, Rajabov said after the game that he thought that this move was a mistake, that it allows white uh, simply too much. Uh, but this game was already uh, known at the time, it was already played, uh, I believe, in 2011 between uh, Kramnik and Nakamura. Uh, but okay, b captures on c3, and now Ivanchuk goes e5 immediately, uh, go going for that center. Uh, d captures on e5, d captures on e5, and the bishop to a3, developing the bishop and attacking the rook on f8. Uh, rook to f7 by Ivanchuk, and now rook f to d1, attacking the queen. Uh, queen to e8, and now e4. And uh, here, uh, white is already compl almost completely developed. The knight is developed, the bishop occupies a nice square, uh, depends on what happens here in the center. Uh, the bishop on a3 is a very nice piece, uh, rook on d1 occupies an open file, uh, rook on b1 occupies a semi-open file, uh, kind of preventing this bishop from developing to d7, uh, but uh, all in all Ivanchuk did kind of forget about his development on the queen side and he decides to play f4 here. And uh, after, after some time a rook to d3 was played by Rajabov, but he could immediately take advantage of this uh, f4 move by Ivanchuk, uh, but it seems he trusted Ivanchuk about this uh, being a good move. Uh, by playing knight to g5, you can sort of take advantage of this, because after rook to d7, uh, rook captures on d7, uh, you can't capture with the bishop, because rook captures on b7. So you'd have to capture with the knight, and uh, then again, all of your queenside development will be uh, halted for some time after c5 comes. And uh, an, either, an even worse variation would be queen captures on d7, uh, queen captures on d7 actually loses the game for black, but uh, it's also a nice uh, position for you to analyze. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to fi figure out why this is losing for black. Uh, at least uh, the first move, or why, why is queen captures on d7 such a problem for black. Uh, so <clears throat> I will give it a couple of seconds for you to decide. Uh, for those of you who have found the correct idea, congratulations, you are an uh, excellent uh, attacker. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the idea is c5. And now you see the problem. Now you see this diagonal opens up towards the black king. Queen to b3 will be uh, a lot of problems for black. Uh, the knight is nicely placed on g5. Bishop to h3 is also an idea. So after black plays something like queen to e8, so queen to b3, the king can come to f8 and uh, queen to f7 will not be such a problem, or knight captures on h7, uh, rook captures on b7 now comes, and now black black's position is completely shattered. Uh, you can't capture the rook, you have to play something, uh, especially if you capture the rook, then queen to b3 is, is deadly immediately. King f8, queen, knight captures on h7, check, uh, king moves, now queen captures here, queen blocks, and now you even lose the rook, and uh, it's completely winning position for white. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, this doesn't have to happen. This only happens if queen captures on d7. But again, uh, still, if knight to d7, then c5 would uh, make a game very, very difficult for black. Uh, but okay, Rajabov played rook to d3. He didn't go for knight g5 immediately. Uh, f captures on g3, h captures on g3, and knight to a6 now. Uh, Ivanchuk tries to tries to develop uh, his queenside pieces. Uh, knight to g5 now comes, and here, instead of going rook to d7 and uh, going pretty much into what we've just seen, uh, Ivanchuk uh, plays rook to c7. He, he invites Rajabov to go for bishop to d6, and uh, Ivanchuk prepares uh, a nice exchange sacrifice. Uh, so, rook, uh, bishop to d6 was played by Rajabov, and uh, here, if you go rook to d7, uh, then this is a bit of a problem. Then c5 comes again. Uh, your bishop is beautiful here on d6, uh, queen to b3 will be an idea again. Uh, for example, h6, queen b3 check, king moves, and now knight comes to e6. Uh, rook to f7 attacking the knight, and now bishop to h3, and this position is beautiful for white. This will be a slow death for black. Uh, so, after bishop to d6, Ivanchuk doesn't move the, the rook, uh, instead he plays a bishop to f6. He attacks the undefended knight on g5. So, uh, offering offering a piece here. Uh, there's really no uh, no hidden secret here why Ivanchuk gives up the rook. Uh, if bishop captures, then knight captures. That's, that's pretty much it. The knight is still attacked, knight f3. And now the idea is that uh, Ivanchuk's bishop pair will be enough to, to compensate for uh, for Rajab of winning the d-file, and uh, the bishop pair will will prevent uh, the double rooks from infiltrating uh, Ivanchuk's position on the d-file. Uh, so instead, after bishop to d6, uh, Ivanchuk plays bishop to f6, and now uh, Rajabov declines this. He doesn't want the rook. Uh, instead, he plays queen to d2. Uh, he increases pressure on the d file and also protects the knight on g5. Uh, now Ivanchuk plays rook to d7 as the knight is no longer attacked on g5, uh, and now comes a bishop to h3, attacking the rook. Rook to f uh, rook to g7, and uh, here bishop captures on e5. So what's the idea here? Uh, of course, you cannot capture. <laughs> uh, you cannot capture the bishop with the queen. If you play queen captures, uh, then you immediately lose this game uh, because rook to d8 will will uh, be checkmate in three moves. Uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and now, as you see, knight is knight is guarding f7. Uh, you have to block this, and then queen captures. This will be checkmate. Uh, so after bishop captures, uh, another option is maybe bishop captures on g5. Uh, but this is this is this isn't much better. Uh, now queen captures, and after bishop captures on h3, uh, bishop captures on g7, and you cannot uh, grab uh, the bishop on g7, unfortunately for black. Uh, if you do, then bishop uh, rook captures on b7 will be deadly. King h8, queen f6, uh, easy checkmate, uh, or black will have to lose a lot of material. So after bishop captures on e5, Ivanchuk decided to play bishop captures on e5, and he decides to sacrifice his queen. Uh, rook to d8, now the queen is uh, under attack, there's no way to move the queen as the queen is pinned. Uh, bishop captures on h3, now rook captures, rook captures, and knight captures on h3. Uh, knight to c5, and uh, now, okay, the b7 pawn is now uh, nicely defended by the knight and by the rook. Uh, and uh, Ivanchuk does does have uh, material for, for, uh, for lacking a queen. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's a better position for white, but still Rajabov has to has to work for his win. Uh, queen to e3, attacking the knight. Now bishop to d6, defending. Uh, f3. Uh, we have knight to e6, uh, king to g2, and now g5. Ivanchuk does have uh, two two rooks, and he wants to break open on the king side. Uh, knight to f2. We have h5. Uh, queen captures on h uh, on a7, and bishop to c5 now, uh, attacking the queen. Uh, queen to a4, and now comes rook to f8. Uh, knight to d3, uh, attacking the bishop. We have h4 now, and uh, here queen to a5. Uh, of course, you don't want to capture here. Uh, if if captures, captures, this opens up a discovered check from the rook. Uh, king to h2, and now rook captures uh, on f3. And uh, it's uh, pretty much a drawn position, but, uh, you know... Uh, when under such heavy fire, it's easy it's, it's easy to overlook uh, a checkmate. Uh, but okay, after h4, uh, queen to a5 with a double attack on the bishop, uh, b6 here, and uh, this is uh, the, the magic position that uh, everyone talked about after this game. Uh, here, Rajabov played rook captures on b6. 
and uh, Ivanchuk was in serious time trouble here. Uh, Ivanchuk played uh, bishop captures on b6, and here after queen captures and h captures on g3, Ivanchuk did play h captures on g3, but in the meantime, his uh, the the clock the time on his clock ran out, and here Ivanchuk lost the game on time. And it's a better position for white, so I guess uh, it's, a, it's a deserving win for Timur Rajabov. Uh, but uh, this uh, brings us uh, to, to the very important line that was missed. Uh, instead of, uh, after Rajabov played rook captures on b6, uh, instead of playing bishop captures on b6, uh, we have uh, a brilliant move that was missed and that allows Vasily to actually draw the game. Uh, so, uh, Vasily did have an excuse, he was very low on time, but you have all the time in the world, uh, so feel free to pause the, vi pause the video here and find the drawing idea for Ivanchuk. Uh, so I will give it a couple of seconds, as usual, uh, for those of you who were able to find the move, congratulations, it's, it's really an incredibly hard move to find. Uh, the move uh, here that draws the game for Vasily is g4. And g4 draws the game uh, because, uh, well, uh, let's check out some of the, some of the responses. F captures on g4 uh, leads to bishop captures on b6, queen captures, and rook captures uh, on g4. And now pretty much anything you do, queen captures, will easily draw the game. Check, 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 check. Uh, if you try king h2, then knight comes here, and again, you will get checks, checks here and back. And queen g6 is nothing, king can, king can simply move back. Uh, another idea after g4... Uh, is what happens if knight captures on c5? White simply decides, uh, okay, I'm just gonna grab a free piece. Uh, well, then white loses the game horribly because g captures on f3, uh, king moves, uh, and now uh, knight to g4, knight to g5 check. King captures and now f2, and you can't really stop the pawn. Uh, rook to b1 with ideas of giving up uh, the rook for a pawn, but knight f3 check. King moves and now knight to e1, and there is no way of stopping. Pawn, pawn to f1, and this will be a queen. Uh, so, and, and white is getting checkmated uh, very soon, whatever you play. Uh, so, the only thing that remains uh, after this uh, g4 move is white. what if white plays the strongest f4? Uh, well, then comes the brilliancy. h3 check. And now it doesn't matter where the king goes. If you go king h1, uh, then the move you really have to find rook to d7, uh, attacking the undefended knight. And uh, uh, black will simply capture this knight and then go rook d1. And if you remove the knight, for example, knight captures here, uh, to, again, win a free piece, then you're getting checkmated. Rook d1 check, king moves, and now knight to g5. And whatever move white makes, uh, it really doesn't matter, if, as there is no useful move, knight to f3 will be checkmate. So uh, a very nice idea, and like I said, it doesn't matter uh, here if you go king h1, you can go even king h2, it doesn't really matter. Again, the idea is the same, rook d7, uh, and still, if you capture the bishop, we go into the same variation. So uh, let's try this, rook capture c6, uh, rook captures, and then let's say rook capture c5, uh, rook d2 check, king moves, knight captures, queen captures, and then this will be uh, a draw by repetition. If you go... Uh, if you go uh, even further with the king, then the h-pawn will be even winning. So yeah, uh, a very nice game and a very nice win for Timur Rajabov. But, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to show you this game. And uh, hopefully hopefully some of you were able to find the g4 move. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, Timur Rajabov versus Vasily Vanchuk from round 2 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And we will show one more game uh, from round 2. And um, then we'll... we'll uh, say something more about the other games that were played. So yeah, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with another video from this championship. Thank you all.